Um, hi, I am Emily Tallman from the English department and I'm a representative of our union, Costa. And I'm here today to interview Tim Linehan. 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 I hadn't tried to say it yet. <laughs> Linehan. Um, so he's here for our Ask the Faculty interview. Um, so for our first question, I think you already know what it is if you've seen the other interviews. Um, but what is your favorite food truck or food? Ladies, chicken and rice. You got to try the green sauce. Very nice. Is this in Visalia? Yes. Uh, and what is the main reason that you chose teaching? You know, I've always been a generalist at heart. I'll get interested in economics and read a little bit there. And then I'll be reading some history. And I majored in psychology. I've always got some new project I'm learning about. And so in graduate school, it didn't take long for me to realize that the really specialized research, it, that wasn't my thing. But when I'm teaching, I can take all these broad interests that I'm always reading in and, and try to weave them into hopefully something like an interesting philosophy lecture. So it, it really allows me to work toward my strengths. Thank you. Uh, and what courses do you teach? You can find me uh, teaching intro to philosophy, ethics, which is moral philosophy, uh, critical thinking, and then we've got one called logic, which is kind of mathy. Um, and what is your proudest non-teaching accomplishment? My marriage of 20 years and keeping our three wild boys alive. I don't, I don't know how many times we've had to run to the emergency uh, room, but so far, so good. You have feral children? We do. <laughs> so do we. I, you might see them running around in the back at some point. Uh, and what is your Watch It a Thousand Times movie? What about Bob? Highly quotable choice uh, and your late work policy i try to find a middle ground so what i do is i assign a 24-hour grace period for every single assignment uh, no questions asked asked no no penalty uh, but that after that you're out of luck and then another thing i do is i give every student two grace tokens at the beginning of the semester and they can trade those in for any assignment for a redo at any time, no questions asked. But again, after, after the uh, grace tokens have been used, I'm pretty hard nosed. Okay. And then your absence policy, what is your absence policy? Similar. I'm, I'm trying to walk, you know, I'm trying to thread that needle in the middle. And so really to do philosophy well, you need other people to bounce ideas off philosophy. I like to think of it as an activity. So you do it in community. And so I, I sort of stress this in the classroom. We need each other. So they need to be there. But I build into the grading structure some wiggle room mm -hmm. for inevitable absences. Um, and what is one piece of advice that you would give to your students? You know, I think I would say, yes, work hard for the grade. Yes, keep your eye on that job that you're trying to land. But really... Focus on developing yourself, your capacities, your habits of mind, your growth. It's a little cheesy, but I think you should leave COS a better person than you, you entered. Definitely. Uh, and what about pets? Do you have pets? None. Now, I do live in the same house as a German Shepherd and a miniature Schnauzer, but they are emphatically the pets of my wife and sons. Uh, I'm not a real pooper scooper kind of guy. So, in fact, he's right here. But, and I can be friendly occasionally, but no, I'm not a pet person. Um, on a Sunday, hike a mountain or kill zombies? I love the Sierra Nevada. It's my favorite part about living in Visalia. So mountains for sure. Uh, favorite recent teaching moment? You know, I was prepared for this one. It's, it's kind of hard. I, I guess I'll go with this one. I te it, it's going to take me a while. I'll try to do this fast. The cosmological argument. It's about why is there anything at all? You know, the, the cosmos, where did it come from? Why is it here? Couldn't have there been nothing? What if there was just nothing at all? And I was going through this spiel and I saw a student in the front row who kind of had this look on his face. And I said, what, you know, what are you thinking? You look like you have a comment. And he said, I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> and he was, he didn't mean like he was physically ill. He meant like this philosophical wonder of, oh my goodness, there could have been nothing at all. And it was just really funny. He just blew his mind. Yeah. That's a good moment. Um, so on a long weekend, where do you like to go? Pismo Beach or Sequoia National Park. And if it's a long weekend, why not both? You could fit them both in. <laughs> um, 
are you the person to do it now or to wait until the last minute? Um, I plan now to do it last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what other career would you pursue? I think defense lawyer would have been fun. I could have used my argumentation and logic that I use in philosophy and, and make my pitch to the jury, you know, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. But I don't think I would have been very good because you have to sort of be, uh, what's the word? Thick skinned, right? I, I don't like making people uncomfortable. So I, I don't think I would have been very good. So a mediocre defense lawyer. <laughs> Right. It sounds like an SNL skit, doesn't it? <laughs> Mediocre defense lawyer. Uh, what is your favorite anxiety reliever? Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I took, oh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Right. Um, what is one inanimate object you would take to a deserted island? Maybe Pascal's Ponce's or just a really big piece of fiction like The Count of Monte Cristo, maybe. Good. That I could read over and over. Um, what is your favorite thing about this job, about your teaching job? I love uh, nerding out on some topic in philosophy. And like I said before, maybe there's a tie in from psychology and history and I'll be reading all about it. And then the challenge of going into class and trying to get my students to get just excited about it as I am. That's uh, a fun challenge. Okay. Um, oh, office decor. Minimalist or maximalist? Minimalist. Clean desk, clear mind. Um, and the biggest obstacle that you would remove for your students if you could? I think, I think we would need a magic wand for this, but if we could change the fact that I think many students just aren't ready for college, and I don't mean academically unprepared, I mean they don't know enough about the world yet, they don't know enough about themselves yet, and so they just kind of find themselves in college because that's what you do after high school. So if we could magically change that so that they, they really know what they want out of their education, I think that would be wonderful. Um, what do you think is the best thing about uh, being a Costa Union member? Over the last, what, 50 years or so, there's been this trend of higher education kind of moving toward a consumer model that I'm uncomfortable with. I, I like the old model of uh, Plato's, you know, Plato's Academy and, and Aristotle walking around with his students. And so this, this consumer model, I'm just glad that Costa is there to represent the interests of faculty because faculty should be front and center in an institution of higher learning. Okay, I agree. Um, is there anything going on in your department that you would want to tell us about? Yeah, we hired uh, a second philosopher for the first time in COS's history just uh, two years ago. His name is Tim Hauk, and he has a YouTube channel that you should check out. It's called Thinking About Stuff. So that's kind of cool. I, I have a YouTube channel, too, but it's not as good. <laughs> What's your YouTube channel? Uh, it's called Let's Get Logical. Okay, hey, good. We can all check out the different philosophy channels. Great. <laughs> well, thank you for talking to us today. Um, and it was great to meet you. That yeah, was fun.